But yes. for Singapore's heritage and culture, yes. Pranakan and culture really is huge. The clothes, the cuisine, yeah. the non Yeah, 100%. Yeah. 100%. And we are going to go right now to Clement On, who is the Deputy Director of Curatorial and Research at the Asian Civilizations Asian Museum Asian. and the Pranakan Museum. He is joining us live from... from oh, there you are. Hey, Clement, Clement how are you doing? doing? Good morning, Glenn. Good morning, Neil. Good morning, Clement. How are you? Thank you for joining us. What looks like you are live from the museum. Would that be correct? Absolutely right. Yeah. Okay, Clement, the museum is reopened. What, what happened in the past four years? What were you guys working on that took four years to get us back to where we are today? Well, you know, it's four years in the making, and finally the Peronica Museum reopened last week. Um, what the visitors are expected to see is a brand new museum, nine full galleries, um, and each floor is themed to a specific narrative. You know, so okay. we are presenting the history of the Peranakan communities through hope, to origins. The second floor we talk about, you know, home, and then the third floor we focus on styles. And these are very broad and universal themes to explore the the beginnings uh, of the pr different Peranakan communities. Um, and, and, and home, we talk about, you know, universal uh, uh, space of, of, of coming home or being at home um, and relates to the different type of material cultures of the Peranakan uh, uh, communities. Again, you know, you mentioned about food, uh, you mentioned about, you know, uh, furnishings that were, were commissioned by the Peranakan uh, museums that they, they, that they used uh, in their own homes as well. Um, style as well, the clothes that they wear, the adornments that they, you know, uh, uh, they, they put on in, in a way of some form of cultural indicators to represent who they, they are and which community they belong to. Now, Clement, you are live at the Piranacum Museum, and we appreciate you for doing that. So if you have a, any plans to go anywhere, we will just follow you. We're happy to follow All you. All right. And as you do that, I will ask you this question. You have picked more than 800 mm. objects and artifacts and set pieces. I mean, you must have a, a treasure trove of artifacts to choose from. And as you walk around the museum and show us, how do you make that decision? You know, what goes in? What, what, do you, what are you looking for that you think is worthy of inclusion? Well, it's, it's, it's a very difficult decision. And we work very hard internally with the curatorial team. At the same time, we also uh, gathered all the different Peranakan communities, uh, also by means of the association. So you will see the involvement of the Peranakan Association of Singapore. You will see the involvement of the Indian Peranakans, the Chittimalakan Association. You will also see the Arab network, uh, the Arab mm. Peranakans and the Jawi Peranakan as well. So the new museum, it also built upon the model of uh, a very inclusive uh, a museum approach by you know showing a lot of some of them yeah. are, that belongs objects belongs to the museum of course but in a way also a lot of objects that comes from um, personal effects that comes from the different families uh, yeah. locally and regionally as well. Which so, that was part so, of the that was part of the former museum as well as I recall there were family collections heirlooms and things that were in and just for our friends who aren't watching uh, visually but are listening on the radio you're now standing in front of a wall. Uh, looks like family photos. Is that what it is? Explain to us yep. what that is. Well, uh, we, I'm standing in the Origins Gallery where we trace the early beginnings of all the different Peranakan communities coming into this part of the region. Um, and here we have uh, a series of uh, portraits, pictures uh, of the different Peranakan communities. They're all arranged thematically. They're thematically in the sense of you know, early photography to uh, a modern photography today. Nice. It's beautiful. And and we see the different clothing styles. You know, some are quite traditional. Some are very Western looking, as we know that that was the blend of uh, Peranakan styles. Um, and, and are you are you still there? Yep. 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 OK, there you go. Yeah. Sorry. I thought I lost your audio. OK, where are you taking us now? You're walking, walking, walking. Is that fun walking. to do a walking tour with us? Well, we're loving this. Well, you know, Glenn. <laughs> This is my first time doing a, a live streaming <laughs> virtual tour, so I'm still using, you know, getting used to the selfie stick at, at this point. Well, I'm walking up to the second floor right now. Okay. Um, so, so, so give me some time. And the second floor, we are focusing on the theme of home. 
Okay, mm. so tell us, tell us a little bit about the theme of home as you get there. Well, I think, you know, home is something that relates to all of us, whether you're Peranakan or not, you know, what is the feeling of coming home? What is the feeling of being at home? And a lot of the objects in the collections uh, were based on, I guess, home furnishings, uh, very characteristic furniture that were used uh, by the Peranakan families. And some of these furniture were also, I guess, integral to this part of the region, its culture. I mean, behind me, um, you, you see this Pintupaga, basically, it means a fan store. I mean, it's gorgeous with its mm, rich, beautiful, you know, brown wood and gold building. That's building. amazing. And, and, yeah. and it's kind of, um, um, I guess, an ar architectural um, device uh, that is very much familiar in this part of the region, where uh, during the day, most families will open their front door, but they keep this uh, fan store closed. Um, mm. partly, you know, for good ventilation because of this, you know, this region's climate. But at the same time, it also sort of gave some form of privacy. Mm -hmm. Can I ask you, Clement, where do you source these wonderful artifacts? I know you've had a wonderful response from the public. So is it all donations or do you purchase them? How, how and where do you find these wonderful, wonderful artifacts? Well, now it's, it's actually a mix of both. Uh, we do source um, sometimes the families, um, different families come to offer us uh, objects that they hope that you know, the museum would be a great caretaker uh, to preserve and, and you know, show some of these objects and, and take them to the next generations of uh, you know, uh, viewerships. Um, and, 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 and sometimes you know, it's an outright gift that the family you know, would like to offer this to the museum as well. So, you mm. know, both. That's great. We're talking with Clement On, the Deputy Director of Curatorial and Research at the Asian Civilizations Museum and the Peronican Museum. He's coming to us live with his selfie stick from the Peronican Museum, just reopening now after four years of being closed, remodeled, revamped. And uh, where are we off to now, Clement? Well, right now we are at the Cer Ceramics Gallery. Um, mm. And in this Ceramics Gallery, we also focus on the food culture as well. One thing that is distinctively different from the previous Peranakan Museum, again, you know, we focus not just on the Chinese Peranakan story, uh, which today it becomes very popular. Most people, when they think about Peranakan, uh, it's, it's, it's uh, almost um, easy to think that, you know, Peranakan means Chinese uh, Peranakan. But in fact, you know, there are lots more uh, to the community as well. Um, yeah. And here you, we see that, you know, there are also... Um, uh, well, uh, over here you see export ceramics that were made for the Arab Peranakan net, um, from the Arab Peranakan communities as well, uh, where we have borrowed some of these uh, huh. um, uh, ceramics from the different um, uh, families. There were Arab Peranakans? I thought it was just Malay Peranakans. This is well, the Malay Peranakan, well, there, there are two, two different tiers, I guess. Uh, okay. One group is the Arab Peranakans, uh, hmm. who trace uh, some of the ancestors from the Middle East. And then there was also the Malay Peranakan in the form of Jawi Peranakan as well. Fantastic. And I'm guessing you're still in the uh, home section, is that correct? Yes, yes, absolutely. So can I ask you as you take us around, so you pick those three key identities, which I think are fascinating. Origins, which you've showed us. Home, where you are now. And then style, which I'm guessing we're going to get to at some point, hopefully. How did yep. you pin down those three particular themes? What is it about those three themes that you thought was uniquely Peranakan? Well, origins, of course, we have to talk about the beginnings. Um, mm. How the different uh, communities, the different ancestral cultures uh, moved to this part of the region and then eventually settled down uh, into married with some of the communities over here and, and, and hence their descendants which then, you know, uh, um, came to be known as the Peranakan. Peranakan, the word in the, itself, you know, um, just linguistically, it basically means uh, local born. Hmm. Hmm. Fascinating. Nice. When, where are we headed next? Well, we are heading next to the style gallery, if time permits. Okay. Okay. And in this style gallery, um, basically, you will see uh, galleries that focus on fashion, uh, batik, some of the beadwork, and uh, jewellery as well. 
And I must just, I just say, like, Clement, as you make your way there, you did a magnificent job there of running up those <laughs> stairs effortlessly. Uh, I think this is the best one. We've we've had museum tours, different museum tours before, yeah. but you're really doing an A1 job here, did, I've got to say. Didn't miss a step, didn't miss a beat. <laughs> didn't trip. Didn't trip. You know, not no, out of breath. You. Fantastic. And do you take guys. care of yourself because it's more important that you are do this safely than, you know, show us the entire uh, museum. So just, we... just to recap briefly, <laughs> we've done Origins, Home, and now we're in style. Back to you, guys. We're in style. We're in style. As you can see from my bike, you know, they're beautiful uh, clothing, they're beautiful batiks. Uh, you will see also beautiful uh, beadwork and embroidery um, that is all part of the Peranakan material culture. Um, you know, we probably are running out of time to show you the individual galleries, but that also show you, you know, the amount of objects and the amount of galleries that we have, you know, ready for the visitors to come in and see us in the museum. Brilliant. Well, I'm going to ask you one philosophical question to finish. Doing all this research, all mm. these wonderful artifact gathering, what is Peranakan to you? <laughs> well, it's... Glenn, it's not an easy question to begin with. Um, I think the whole def there is no one way to define Peranakan culture. Uh, if, if you take it as a cultural uh, a definition, it's a phenomenal, again, as we explain, of uh, different communities coming into this part of the region. Uh, you know, eventually they settle down and, and their offsprings, their, 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 their following descendants, are known as the Peranakan. But as we see, you know, the meaning and the definition of Peranakan today is shifting as well. Um, what do you, how do you see about the, um, the new migrants coming in who settle in, in Singapore or this part of the region? Uh, does that mean that, you know, then their next generations uh, could also be termed as Peranakan? I mean, rightfully so, if you follow the historical uh, definition as well. So it, it is really, you know, I see it as a, a cultural phenomenon uh, than, than anything. Yeah. Uh, Clement, as, right before we go, um, opening hours, I, I believe, is it, are Singaporeans and PRs free and others need to pay? Uh, what is the schedule, what is the, what does the process look like of people actually going to the museum? Do they need to book in well, advance? No, uh, we are open from uh, 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. every day. Uh, and right now, uh, for all Singaporeans uh, and PR holders, it's free admission to visit the permanent galleries. Um, there will only be a ticket charge uh, if, if it's a, a international visitors. Okay. Fantastic. Great. So get down to the Pranakam Museum. Well, Four are, years in the waiting. We are so excited. And, and I just want to also mention one more thing, and that is, Clement, the next interesting exhibit that you have at ACM at the Asian Civilizations Museum. We'd love to have you on about that as well. Thank you. Thank yeah. you, Glenn. And thank you for a wonderful, breathless whirlwind tour. <laughs> you might be a contender, Clement, for best live museum tour yet. What do you think, Glenn? Uh, absolutely. You're, you're right up at the top of the uh, top of the chart right now, Clement. Thanks oh so much God. to Clement thank Ong you. from uh, ACM and the Veronica Museum. Have a great weekend. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye. Thank you.